welcome back to the Agri live stream. I'm joined by Thomas Ryan from the IFA, John McDooley from uh, the Department of Agriculture, and Neil Keane from Altec. And we're going to just touch on the topic of sustainability. You know, it's a word that's thrown out there, like in the agricultural sector, more often than not these days. Thomas, just to, to pull it back, what does sustainability at farm level actually mean? Well, look, first and foremost, sustainability is about farm level returns. It's about profitability. And dare I say, if we look at the current problems on, on, in the beef sector, isn't farm level profitability the real sustainability challenge? Because I hear Joe Healy, IFA president, talking about it's hard to be green when you're in the red. So it's hard for, at farm level to have a wider discussion around, the, around environmental and social sustainability when the biggest challenge is farm level profitability. So it's a combination of economic, environmental and social but the economic has to be in place in order to be able to environmentally sustainability proof your business. Having said that, I think I would say farming is doing an awful lot when it comes to the environmental sustainability piece. I mean, I look at the voluntary resource efficiency program that IFA runs with the Environmental Protection Agency called Smart Farming. This is a voluntary program not driven by regulation or legislation that's oversubscribed in terms of farmers wanting to engage and participate in it. And that's in addition to the 121,000 farm assessments done as part of the Origin Green Carbon Navigator. It's in addition to the Department of Agriculture's GLOSS program, the Green Low Carbon Agri-Environment Scheme. 40% of farmers are in it. So despite the economic challenges, farming is very much committed to the environmental sustainability as a part of future-proofing their own farm businesses. Okay. John, I can ask you the same question. What does sustainability mean, I suppose, at a policy-making level? I suppose, that, again, at the policy level, it, it is a sort of a, a broad term. It seems to be bandied about an awful lot with different individuals. But like sustainability to the Department of Agriculture is about trying to grow sustainably, so it's trying to increase output with lower impact on the environment and improve profitability for the farmer. Because, again, it's, it's important that we recognise that farmers are at the centre of a viable and economic rural economy, and we want to try and achieve that balance. But it's very much, there's a lot of trade-offs that you're trying to consider within that term of sustainability. And ultimately, you know, Ireland is rec recognised for its very green image. But you sort of, you have to give credence to what that means. And the public are more scrutinising than ever before. So it's important that we're very transparent over the term sustainability to try and ensure that it mean, meets everyone's goals. From farmers' need for economic viability the need for farmers to contribute to the wider rural economy and then for farmers to be seen to contribute to reducing their environmental footprint, be it water quality, air quality, climate action, all these things come into it. So it's a big ask in terms of what we're looking at in terms of a small word, sustainability. Neil, I just want to bring you in there. In light of what maybe Thomas and John said, what are all tech doing in this space, I suppose? We, we've been asked by a lot of people within the supply chain, what can we do to help uh, sustainability credentials? We don't have a magic bullet, but I think one of the things Thomas said, agriculture is already doing a lot. So one of the areas we're working with, with is in our subsidiary companies who help in defining carbon footprints, but also help in defining what's the diet efficiency, so what is the carbon output from that diet. So our, our focus has been over the last few months is, is looking at being able to to find what is that carbon footprint more accurately and being able to articulate a message more robustly because what's happening with a lot of the supply chain is they're being asked very inter interrogative questions about what is your supply chain, what is your carbon footprint realistically and people are trying to go under the bonus and really trying to understand that in more detail. So we, as Ireland Inc, need to have a robust message to deal with those queries. Uh, Thomas, I'll just bring it back to you. What's the, the, the farmer's voice on the ground? You know what I mean? Are they willing to adapt and, and, and make changes on their farms? Um, they are. Uh, they are willing. And as I was saying earlier, look, uh, they are. I think the future is very much, in terms of sustainability actions uh, beyond 2019, the future is very much going to be driven by the science. And in that regard, when we look at things like the Chagas, what's called a marginal abatement cost curve, or the climate roadmap, as we call it, I mean, that sets out key measures, there's 28 actions in that, which has the potential to reduce emissions from the sector by about 40%, right? And a lot of that is around um, efficiency, uh, a lot of it is around energy management, um, and then things like carbon sinks. I mean, we have the largest permanent pastures uh, in Europe, in terms of our grassland, but recognising that carbon sink when it comes to the climate messages is going to be critically important. But the one point I would say is it's fine to have the science, 
but we're lucky in Ireland that between Chagas and the private planners we have 800 advisors between the science and the farmer. And if we're, if we're to make a real difference and we have to capitalise on the sciences there, we have to have a fully mobilised advisory service who's engaged in the sustainability message, focused on improving farm level profitability and by doing it then improving the sustainability footprint as well. Yeah. And Neil, you've got like a lot of support units um, on the ground with all tech. You know, what, and they'll be mixing with farmers um, on the ground. What's the uptake with you with the farmers? What's the it's just, you have a, like your team is, is on the ground working away with farmers. What's the their what the, respond to you? Like what's their, their message coming back to you? Simplifying the message, uh, as, as Thomas says, you can't be green if you're in the red. So simplifying the message, being empathetic as well. So trying to what what does sustainability look like? So if you're getting your cows back in calf quickly, one of the tools, one of the things we're launching this week is benchmark, and one of the areas that within that is looking at what is the efficiency of a diet. So. We found solace in that we sent away three different grass covers, 600, 1500, and I think 1900. And the one that came back most carbon efficient was the one 1500, which is the one that Chagas and the advisory service are always advocating farmers should be going into. So tools like that are helping to come with a common message that we're helping to make that message easy for farmer and also then easy to apply and that they understand a lot of what's helping with sustainability is actually best practice and those also help for profitability. John, do you think Irish agriculture kind of has a bad rep or it's, it's unfairly um, do you know what I mean, targeted, I suppose, in light of the 2020 targets and 2030 targets? Yeah, well, I suppose overall, I guess Irish agriculture is probably is perceived to have a bad rep purely because it is the largest component of our economy. You know, and as the largest component, of course, it's going to look, everyone will focus in on what can you do. But in terms of Minister Bruton launched a new climate action plan there earlier this summer, you know, one of the key parts in terms of where agriculture can contribute within that climate action plan is on nitrogen management, nitrogen efficiency. And that starts around that soil fertility piece that Thomas mentioned, getting farmers to engage better in soil testing and reading those results and getting advice to feed into optimum use of chemical fertiliser. And then the second aspect is feeding in on what Neil has mentioned in terms of around that dietary aspect. Again, protein in the field trying to right size the amount of protein for the different production phase that your animal is in in terms of trying to minimize the protein intake so that you can reduce that protein or nitrogen loss from the system. And then about recycling farmyard manures better onto grasslands and onto arable soils, in particular through low emission slurry spreading techniques, incorporation of manures where possible. Again, it's working on that nitrogen model. You know, if there's one simple message to take away today in terms of sustainability. It really is trying to measure and benchmark your nitrogen management either into the soil, crops, grass system or into the animal feed system in terms of where it is. Try and work and understand what that is and try and right size it for in terms of what sort of output you're trying to get and work in that place. And that would be the greatest impact that a farmer can do in terms of contributing to climate action, also contributing to improved air quality and reducing ammonia emissions, and contributing to wet, better water quality protection in terms of less risk of nitrogen loss into waterways. So I'd be starting on that in terms of a simple message. And finally, Thomas, I suppose, do you think farmers should be more rewarded, I suppose, for, for making better attempts at becoming more sustainable? Yeah, isn't it, isn't it a, a really big challenge where the consumer who's our ultimate, uh, um, um, the ultimate end user of the premium product, premium dairy, beef, uh, and commodity products that's, produced, that's, consumed by, uh, that's consumed. Are they willing and prepared to pay for that extra sustainability piece, right? I mean, what I would say to you is, um, ourselves within IFA, uh, Board B, uh, the National Dairy Council, and others have come together to form uh, a collaboration called Meat and Dairy Facts. And the purpose of that here is to begin to rebalance the discussion. I mean, for too long, uh, for too long, I would say to you, the argument has been very much to the fore, very much driven by the environmental movement who, uh, and farmers can't identify with it. So at farm level, a lot of action has been taken, but I would say to you, the environmental shaming is having quite a negative impact on farmers and what farmers are, and, and uh, on farmers themselves. And what we're trying to do in meat and dairy facts is trying to put out some of, the, some of the facts around our carbon efficiency per kilo of product, 
number one when it comes to dairy, we're in the top five at the European level when it comes to beef, and that that, that must mean something when it comes to the retail shelf and having that engagement and positive engagement with consumers. Because look around you here, every farmer here at the ploughing has a very good message as a sustainable food producer. I think for the consumer to understand that and hopefully be prepared to pay that extra bit for it, you know. Yeah, we'll leave it there. Thanks very much for the panel for joining us today. And we'll be back with the live stream shortly. Thank you.